What's up, Zox fam? And we're back with some more Dislike. Now, we're going to be getting into my overall thoughts of this anniversary, what I feel like was done well, what I feel like could be done better, and as well as the projected future. You already know how I get when looking at what is to come and talking about a few things that you might want to prepare for. So, of course, guys, definitely make sure you guys like, subscribe, so you don't miss out on any of the exclusive content. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, I want to start this up by saying that I feel like overall for this to be our first anniversary, it was pretty decent, right? Um, I will say that the first part of the anniversary was probably the more hype part. Not so much with the unit after we kind of got into it, but I definitely will say in terms of the events themselves, there was definitely more hypeness to that. I would say with this part two um, to the anniversary with Mateo, um, there's a little less hype surrounded around the events, but definitely more hype around the units and specifically one unit. Um, but I will say nonetheless, it did kind of swap. Now, let's talk about the initial like events, right? Uh, now, what I feel like they did pretty well well obviously presentation they they killed it they, they really did a good job of advertising presenting this um etc right and now when we're looking at like the sweet wishes this was amazing not gonna lie the sweet wishes uh the rewards you got from this were absolutely amazing i actually didn't mind logging in every day for this um this felt like anniversary rewards I, i'm not gonna lie this overall like you got the milestone bar for the rewards and then every time you talk to an esper you got rewarded for talking to them so this was actually really really good this actually ended up being a lot better than i thought um in comparison to some of the other components for the uh anniversary i thought that other components are actually going to be better but this ended up being one of the better uh aspects of the anniversary reward wise so um i definitely like would love to see this like a half any you know second anniversary uh things like this coming back um and even of course building upon that and making it better so definitely have to give them uh you know a thumbs up on that one now with the flaming echo you know, we're going to be going back and forth on good and bad. I feel like the idea of the Flaming Echo was good in the sense of giving people, you know, access and really players accessibility to a freebie legendary, right? But my problem that I had with the Flaming Echo was the fact that it was just too much RNG involved. I think that like trying to isolate players into this concept of let this random gumball machine pick a legendary for you and it end up not being any value to you um, is kind of like it, it kind of sucks. Right. Um, I think that this should have honestly just simply have been a selector um, rather than I get it. The theatrics of the event itself, you know, it's like come log in every day. I get that. Make us log in every day. That's fine. And then at the seven days, give us a selector. I, hey, however you want to flip it to where you're still getting your login days, that's fine. But I do feel like this should have given more value into a more specific and isolated choice, uh, considering when we're looking at like the cel the celestial anomaly and just kind of talking about the, that reward process, how much and what it's really going to require the average person to be able to get to those higher incremented rewards. Uh, and the fact that those are even just for resos, they're not really so much for new copies of a unit, right? Um, but outside of that, I still am grateful and still appreciate the fact that we did get a freebie five star but i really do wish that players had more um i would say accessibility to what five star they were able to get it did not just be random right uh so outside of that i think that this was still a pretty solid idea but it definitely was something that could have had a lot of work done uh to make it better now the jigsaw event I definitely have no qualms with this. Uh, you know, for players like myself, I didn't really get much out of this outside of the gold records, which is fine. I'll take the gold records. But for newer players, this was still really, really good uh, because it allowed them to be able to pick up a additional four star uh, Esper outside of the freebies that they already got. So it made it a little bit better for like, you know, those, uh, you know, units like Sanders, for example, that requires you to have a level 60 unit uh, to even be able to start buying a shards. Uh, it kind of allowed players to be able to get out of that process um, and kind of skipping ahead and even I would say in certain ways depending on what choice they made speed up their progression so again 
it was, you know, login based where you still had to like log in for a certain amount of days. But I still think that it was still done fairly well uh, to where it was still high in value to, you know, anyone's account that was trying to get a certain unit that they might not have been able to pull from the gotcha yet. So got to give it to it for the jigsaw. Right. Uh, flashback. Mine was wrong. So I, <laughs> this thing's been calling me a whole different name. I don't even know at this point. Uh, but it was nice to see like your memories and stuff like that. So that was cool. Um, graffiti wall. Uh, this is obviously something that I, I really don't want to rate this too much because this is like, um, you know, kind of like a competition thing. So these are always just generally good things to have going on within the game or uh, within the community, really, uh, just for engagement. So really nice to see like the extra, uh, you know, leap of putting like, you know, um, different members of the community's artwork inside the game and stuff like that. So, hey, I'm always for that stuff, considering I'm an artist myself. Right now, outside of that. As far as event missions and stuff, right? Um, we had the uh, Reincarnation Tower. Now, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. For most in-game players, majority of us probably really haven't been doing Reincarnation just yet. Just because of the fact that we've been trying to do the Celestial Anomaly. Um, and that is what the content is kind of set for for us. More so for, like, you know, early game, mid-game players. You're probably trying to farm this. So that you can get these respective resources. I always think that these resources are a W. I think the gold record count, the you know win uh, ticket or win record, um, and or any other element based off of what event is up is always good. Um, they really honestly have, I feel like, have made the shop slightly better than what it used to be, uh, giving more value to it. Um, but I will say just listening into a lot of players they've been having a lot of difficulty with this so i'm going to run through it and probably have some videos coming but i will say that the reincarnation tower i feel like was supposed to be just something generally fun to do um you know with a little bit of challenge but i've been seeing people like saying like it's getting like really really hard uh which i will say i guess it's okay for that to be the case to a degree but you still don't want to have every aspect of the game feeling like a grind fest uh you definitely want there to be elements and aspects that players can do where they get rewards and it doesn't feel like they're you know melting their brains away to do it so i guess it could be argued this could be a user thing but i have seen a lot of people saying the same thing um because i think like jiang mong uh, and parmi and certain units were taken out that would make this process of climbing the reincarnation tower to get those rewards a lot easier um so again it is expected that content will evolve but i do want to throw that out there as just like a reminder that we want content to also still give fun elements and fun aspects uh to you know just the enjoyment of the players especially when it's not like super super in-game content right now outside of that uh we have nothing else uh when we're looking at um you know the event tab if we go to the event itself i still gotta run through this myself um we do have the trial this is like with every other event um, I will say as far as the rewards for this, um, I did claim one box so far. It's only like one unit that I have that's uh, non shimmer. That's not fully resoed. But I will say that I wish that the flow packs, the wind pack and the inferno pack was set for uh newer units um now rezos are important and so i think that is a good argument point and devil's advocate is that yes rezos are important but i also think that when you're like starting a game and considering who the event is really catered to this event is really honestly being catered to more so the newer players uh first copies of units are definitely going to be more impactful than rezos right away just because of the fact that it gives you placeholders to be able to fill up your content uh, and then when you're looking at different things you know if you're doing sentinel hunt or if you're trying to do all the ritual miracle dungeons or desolate lands it is going to require quite a bit of espers for you to be able to complete those things so i think that yes rezos over time and i would say long term are definitely good um but i also think that that early like looking at who this event is really catered to um is really going to be important for those players to have those characters to be able to progress throughout content so i guess it is one of those things where either one is kind of good i guess uh but i definitely think that overall this is something that's more catered to those that are you know early entry into the game to mid game uh and even for those that late game that just might be missing a few units of uh, rezos right uh now the platinum shop this is definitely something you know no matter who you are you're gonna be taking advantage of like i need to buy all these real quick thank you um and get my legendary bill on the next portion this unlocks i would definitely say this has value for every player in the game i don't think that this is something that's just exclusive to early mid game or end game so yeah i mean I mean, honestly, it 
it's not bad. I feel like they always do these events, especially as of late, pretty well. Um, so I have no complaints when it comes to this. Really no huge critiques. Um, just maybe more EXP value might be a big thing just for the progression of people's accounts, um, especially because this was like an anniversary. I feel like the EXP value should have been through the roof or even doing like a times two drop rate or something um, just for the anniversary. I think like those buffs, we kind of stepped away from that, but those buffs still matter and they're still applicable to things like Sonic Rift. They could technically still do a times two on that. Uh, and I haven't forgotten. Yeah, I thought we might have forgotten because you did all these nice things and shiny things in the game. But I didn't forget about the fact we were supposed to be getting some buffs a, a little while ago. So, yeah, I, I'm bringing it back up. Um, but <laughs> that's pretty much that with that. Um, you know, outside of that, they did kind of like lock the uh, currency for this event um, behind days. I, I mean, not necessarily the worst thing um, when we're just talking about getting accesses, but to be quite fair, I don't think that this is anything really too crazy uh, considering that like you know you have to still do reincarnation and stuff like that reincarnation tower etc right so i mean it is what it is but uh, i definitely will say like you know not everything needs to be locked behind seven days i mean they're gonna be playing anyway because they gotta try to get that you know legendary esper you, know, you don't gotta lock everything behind seven days all right <laughs> so <laughs> so that's that now uh outside of that uh we do have the um celestial anomaly uh, which i think is obviously the other component to the anniversary and really the beginning of uh I, w I would say is the new chapter of gameplay going into the future of dislike uh and the reason why i say this is because every week so we have currently 15 days left uh for this phase one uh, and we are currently on the Withering Messenger um, right now, right? Uh, and we're going to have in phase two, the Scorch Messenger unlocking and then the Void Messenger. Now, there's something that I want to talk about with this as well that I didn't really pay attention to, um, but I think they kind of told us what attributes are coming, right? Uh, so if we take a look here, right? Withering Messenger, what is the attribute advantage to Flowitude, right? Uh, the attribute advantage is going to be um wind right what is the attribute advantage to inferno <laughs> that that right there if you can answer that question right let's hold on let me see if i can show you right the attribute advantage to uh to uh inferno is flow wow i just had a whole brain like blank um it's flow right now, the thing is, is that when you're looking at what is coming next, and this is, a, again, guys, getting into what I feel like is going to be coming, uh, leading into the next phase of the game, um, you know, get, getting the Scorch Messenger going into phase two, this means that this next unit is going to be more than likely it's the lion. Uh, he's going to be flow -tuned. Um <laughs> which, which. I mean, if they somehow, some way don't make him relevant to the Scorch Messenger, that would be a little weird. I don't think that he's not going to be uh, relevant to the Scorch Messenger. But if I'm going based off, this is just speculation. If I'm going based off of the attribute that you have to deal with and what is going to be able to counter it, it's going to be flow attuned. And then that means the Void Messenger, whatever comes after that, is going to be Inferno. So... That's going to be really, really important to keep in mind. This is on a uh, three week basis. So uh, phase one, we got two weeks left on that. Phase two is going to have for four five and six its own respective three weeks. Uh, and then the phase three is going to be another uh, three weeks as well for seven, eight, nine. Uh, now, the important thing to remember here is that, again, a also kind of <laughs> and it's crazy because I, I I'm, I'm so mad I wasn't paying attention to this. They also color coded it, right? So this one um, is, again, I mean, it's kind of weird that that's blue for wind attuned, but yeah, it, it is, I guess. Um, but then this is purple for flow, <laughs> which is crazy. And then they have that for Inferno uh, for the third week, right? So, or the third phase. So when we're looking at, right? And I know you guys are probably like, yo, Zox, this is getting crazy, right? So if we're looking at what unit um, I'm talking about or referring to, this is the next unit that's coming. Now, the thing is, is that they said that this is going to be a reoccurring thing that's going to be happening uh, where they're going through different Esper stories and they're going to be, uh, you know, 
giving us the uh, whatchamacallit, like a new unit uh, with that uh, to coincide with the celestial anomaly. So I think they're keeping this as perma content that's going to have characters that are going to associate to this. Not sure if they're going to go past this nine weeks, uh, but if they do decide to do that, that is going to be quite interesting because that's going to be covering a, a couple more months, uh, at least for what we have, right? Now, outside of that, um, you know, we of course have this Brutus, uh, as some people have been speculating unit um but then they also have like units like this Let's see if we can get her on the screen so i'm assuming this is going to be another five star that's going to be coming um and i'm not sure if she's going to be the infernal unit because they already have showed us they didn't show us mateo but they're obviously we're seeing the lion guy uh and then of course there's this uh i, I don't know what the heck this is but whoever the heck this is is looks like he's going to be crazy so i'm speculating that this is going to also be one of the units that's going to be showing up for this celestial anomaly as well um so again when you're looking at potential units that you could be saving for these looks like some of the choices not to say that there won't be other units that could potentially come in between because like i said mateo wasn't really like you know showcased or advertised but yeah that's just something that i definitely wanted to like kind of throw in there as just some food for thought that i feel like some people probably weren't thinking about right now outside of that right let's go back I want to kind of address the whole entire concept of this event um, now that I kind of got that out of the way. Um, but going into like the rest of like what we are getting, you know, from this anniversary and just kind of it coming to the end as we entering in, like I said, the uh, I would say the generalized and like kind of perma content is what it seems like for uh, the next few months. Um, you know, with this, this is going to be some pretty decent content reward wise, especially if you're at more of an in game standpoint. I think my concern with this is like the return in value for those those that are earlier um because like is this stuff going to be accessible always after the phases unlock or are these things going to close when we go into the next phase right or, or are they going to close after all these phases are done so how is that going to look for you know character you know for players in the future now uh the other thing is too which i'm not 100 sure is if we're going to be getting more than one copy of yamato or if they're going to be swapping this out for other units now it would be cool if they did keep them as a celestial anomaly unit to be able to acquire copies um but again that does kind of coincide with what they said was they weren't going to be adding him to the gold record gotcha just yet and i don't know if that falls under the umbrella of we're not adding him to the gotcha right now until three four months because that's what they normally do or He's not going into the gotcha because he's going to be the event unit that you'll be able to get from this, which then again would be emphasizing the, you know, aspect of being able to do this so that you're able to get Yamato copies and resos, etc. Right. But I will say so far. From what I've seen, Yamato, at least at base, is pretty decent. Uh, not the most game-breaking or game-changing unit, but I definitely think that he's pretty solid for what I've been able to test and see, at least from the initial copy, right? Now, um, outside of that, um, I will say that as long as they continue to evolve and add more to the game, it definitely can be a lot of growth to potentially come. I feel like overall with this event, um, it's decent. I feel like there is like a little bit of a gap and a little slight amount of boringness that's kind of happening right now. I think it's just because of the AFK aspect of the event. So you kind of have to wait. You can't just like climb straight through it. And I kind of get that, you know, um, it does take a certain amount of time for them to be able to develop content. So you don't want to be able to like burn through everything. But I also think that there has to be a balance to, uh, you know, overall how players are able to get through content in the time that's required so that they're still enjoying themselves. But all in all, and through and through, I think that I would rate this anniversary a solid, let's say probably seven out of 10 um, personally. Um, and that's just because I do always feel like there is more that could have been added or could have been done uh, just to make the player experience for this anniversary much better. Um, again, though, I will say I have been fairly impressed for this to have been our first anniversary. I think that they did do a lot of different things to help boost players accounts overall. Um, but I do think that there's a lot of work to be done and hopefully going into, you know, half Annie or even second anniversary or even our first collaboration, we're going to see so much more coming from the development team. But, uh, I am very, very, uh, you know, excited to see what they're going to be doing. Hopefully this power scaling, you know, stuff that's happening doesn't get too, too crazy, you know, with Schwan pin and all that extra jazz. But, um, yeah, I will say all in all through and through, um, it's been decent. Uh, I think the only other thing that I feel like I wish would have been a little bit more um, 
I guess kind of like it would have been a thing was like maybe the anniversary units that are on rate up being more impactful to the game. I think that that's kind of a fair statement. I don't feel like Yuhime is that impactful to the game. Like, you could go without having Yuhime on your account. And I guess to a degree, it could be argued. You could go without Mateo on your account, but they kind of made him for the event. So I guess maybe in the sense, depending on if this ends up being Perma content, then maybe this could be a thing where he's like, you know, having that value there. Um, but I definitely will say, like, I feel like I wish that it was those units that had more impact than not so much just the Shimmer Sean Penn coming into the game that's giving all this impact to the game. Um, because I definitely think that that's what a lot of players were expecting and really were hoping for with uh, Anniversary. So I think that, again, all in all, that's just something I think the team should try to stay away from is jumping too much into the whole concept of what's going to be a price selling point of selling shimmers and power scaling shimmers and then not giving that same value to the non uh, shimmer uh, espers. So, again, that's just kind of my take on that. Let me know what you guys think. I know that there's a lot that was packed in this video and really does packed into anniversary. But this is just ultimately the uh, honest truth for myself. Um, and I'm intrigued to know what you guys think and how you guys feel with anniversary. But that's going to be that, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Stay blessed. Stay charged up. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.